Hello, Prosecutor Weatherman. This is Daryl McClanahan. Yes, sir. I received your emails. Okay. Okay, last night I was called by Deborah Brizio and accused of calling her father. I did not, and uh, I put that phone call up, and since she called me, I asked her where her power of attorney was, and she said she had one. So I expect that to be in the discovery. No, it will not be. Okay, why not? I don't have it. Okay, you don't have it. All right. Uh, and and I don't want to be adversarial. I'm I'm uh, trying to defend myself. Uh, and and then your your response on the special prosecutor. I wanted to. I know you weren't there in November. When, when Christopher was going to represent me in the case, and he was told by Garibrandt that he had a conflict of interest because he had communicated with uh, Deborah Brizio, and the judge allowed him uh, to recuse himself. And I believe since you and Christopher are friends, the canon does state that you shouldn't be the prosecutor. So first off, you're going to have to prove Nothing about any relationship I have with Christopher Swanish is going to prevent me from adequately looking at your case, reasonably determining an outcome that should occur and seeking that outcome. Plainly, I would not be considered to be prejudiced against you since I offered you the opportunity to not face the possibility of going to prison. I appreciate you did not screw up probation. That offer is clearly gone because you sought remand so you no longer have the benefit. Since you indicated that the judge under oath because it was an open court proceeding tell the, the there was that there, I somehow bullied you and forced you into I didn't I didn't say you did it on purpose. That's how I felt. I was unable to you were at the elevator whenever I came to the courtroom. Everyone should be able so here, to So here's so here's how this is gonna play, okay? We're going to have a pre on you. I'm going to present the evidence. The judge is going to determine whether or not that's sufficient to go to trial. Okay. I can't trust what you're telling me. Apparently, you don't trust what I'm telling you. So the ability I, to negotiate here is probably gone. Okay. What can I not trust do you on? So you apparently believe that I bullied you into accepting a deal, which is no, I, farthest from what was going to happen. I think the totality of circumstances did that, not you. Uh, you were only so one. There is an open court. I can't prevent people from being there. You can't prevent people from being there. The judge can't prevent people sure. from being there. Sure. But there's... It's an open court. But there's so also... you're going to say that every court proceeding that you're a part of is somehow going to be of a type that you feel bullied, then there's simply not going to be any option for negotiation. No, I don't... I don't because f- any plea you were to enter into would not be considered to be knowingly voluntarily entered because you will then come back and say that somehow the circumstances were which leaves us with no other option than to continue to trial, to have a jury trial. And whatever well, that's if, the, that's if the judge says so at the preliminary hearing. You're, you're sure she's we're going to... present evidence that there was damage done to a house, that that house was, at the time, not having been filed closing upon, indeed not been transferred, was not yours. Is uh, Deputy Miller going to be available? I don't know. Okay, well, I did put in for to subpoena him. Have you filed subpoenas? No, I asked the judge to. Judge doesn't file subpoenas, you do. Okay. So, uh, are you calling uh, the person who wrote the probable cause statement? I don't know. It depends on whether or not I feel like I need him to testify or not. Okay. And and there is a sorry decisis. Uh, there is precedent for uh, this case. Uh, and she never presented any uh, evidence that she was the eight. And also, I want to let you know that we have, it, with that lease to purchase contract, we accepted liability to pay the back taxes and to take care of the property as it is our own. We accepted liability on that. We were also sued over the property line. Are you aware of that? I'm not. Okay. We were sued because the property line was built nearly upon the property line. It 
it's not quite on the property line. I think I have a video where the surveyor says the proper the deck is on the property line and it'll have to be tore down. And I said, no, it won't. A judge or someone will have to decide that. Uh, and it was decided that uh, Mr. Raymond would not be held responsible for the lawsuit. And uh, that's in the uh, docket entries that Daryl and April would be held liable. We are held liable for the property and we had a contract to sell it and we were the the agents regardless of the deed being put in our name he gave us exclusive right to sell the property and i believe and it was also looked at by keller williams realty attorneys and they believe i have standing as well and they also let me know about the sorry decisis case that i i can make a motion and ask the judge to look at uh we never had any intent and deputy russo on the 22nd, I had a conversation with him where he had told my guys, Noel Cole and his father, were over there cleaning up trash. They were told to leave by law enforcement, and the house was broken into. The only keys to that property were held by me in April, and one was given to Noel, and he locked the house up. That's why I want to question Deputy Miller. Deputy Miller followed Noel around, and they locked the house up tightly. Someone broke into the house so they could take possession, and then Russo gets on the phone with me and tells me, by all appearances, I've abandoned the property. I did not abandon the property. The spray painting on the front of the house was to acknowledge to stay out. There are still no trespassing signs posted, and it had not followed the proper procedures for us to be removed from the, the contract that we made with Ronald Raymond. And I, I would like to settle this. I mean, there's a... a I do want to, uh, would like to negotiate this and, and put it into this. Uh, I don't want to. How I, can I? So here's the problem. You say you want to negotiate this. You say you want to settle this. And yet, having negotiated a plea, you walk into circuit court and demand that that be thrown out, and you go back into associate circuit court. You didn't put it on the record. You didn't want to. Associate circuit court is not where we negotiate pleas. Okay, that is not where we resolve pleas. Okay, the, there will not be. say I was good with that. The guy is outside the door. Is there going to be any charges for him destroying my wife's phone? And this and this is a witness that you're going to, I'm, I'm going to make a, a, a motion today. I'm going to file it. I'll, I'll do it today. And I'm going to make a motion to exclude Mr. Steely as a witness against me. He, there's a police report. Okay, he, he put up flyers and he, he told Hannaford that it's alright to shoot at flyers of me. He, I also have a protection order where he makes many personal attacks upon me in a protection order he did not follow through with. And I will question him. I'm glad you got those things. That does not give you grounds to exclude a witness's testimony. I think it does when they're, when they're, uh, have, when they're, they have nothing, they have a, a clear agenda to uh, har harm me. He, he, uh, that, goes, that goes to the weight of their testimony, not the admissibility. Uh -huh. They don't have grounds okay. to exclude. You can argue that he has a vendetta against you. Mm -hmm. You can argue that the judge should not believe him because of these things that you're telling me about. But you can't prevent him from testifying. Well, I'm not just, I'm just not uh, telling you it's the truth. No, I understand that. I understand that from your position that is the truth. Okay, can, can well, I send you a copy of the protection that. order for you to look at the statements he makes? It actually needs to go to the handwriting experts. Uh, and Cass Martin is supposed to send me handwriting out. This is a person who stalked my family. Listen, I understand that you believe you have criminal charges that should be filed against every individual. That's not what we're talking about right now. Okay, well, I'd like we're to talk to you. Uh, okay, we're, we're past. You. You've said what you wanted to do. And, and so I'm asking you about the video in the courthouse where me and my family are assaulted. I'm sick today. I apologize for my voice. Uh, where, okay. I've been pretty hoarse the last couple days, too. Uh, he has made a constant effort to heckle me outside the court. 
I have not done that. I haven't be misbehaved, and I believe the video shows that. You've watched that video, correct? I have. Okay. Uh, why are there no charges against Mr. Steely? Was, uh, because I have not yet decided upon the filing of charges. Okay, is that going to be before or after the preliminary hearing? I don't know. I okay. have a large collection of charges I'm considering on multiple different people, okay. and I get to them as I get to them. I'm, I'm sure you do. I, I uh, know that you have a lot going on. Uh, but this happened back in August. Uh, and Prosecutor Garibrandt didn't... I, I got a phone call from uh, Sergeant Hannaford, I believe he's Sergeant uh, Kyle Hannaford, telling me they were going to arrest him. He woke me up at 11 at night or something and called me and said that they were going to be uh, pressing charges against Mr. Steely. And he had charges pressed against him before, and I believe they were dismissed because... Uh, Prosecutor Garibrandt and Judge Raymond Gross, who wrote the contract that did not disclose the property line was built on the deck and the sewer ran on the neighbor's water, on the neighbor's land. And I repaired the sewer, and Deborah Brizio was never any part of being an agent of making any repairs. She's absolutely broke and lives on her father's dime. And this is a, a, a goal to, to uh, her Weatherman. father told me, and I have recordings of him telling me, uh, that if I die, the, the contract is con to continue for seven years, and my daughter has nothing to do with it. The deal is between me and you, Daryl. And Steely and them forced us out of there at gunpoint. My wife only took a job in another area so we could move the hell away from there. That's the truth. And then he's continued the behavior. There's the, the misty the child services made a report that he was driving back and forth of our house while she was there, and her exact words were, that's very unsettling. And she made a report to Deputy Miller. There's supposed to be a course of conduct against this gentleman, and these people have teamed up and conspired to say that we damaged the house when we did not damage the house. The house could be sold right now. The house, someone would buy the house. Mr. Raymond could ask for X amount over the payout, the liens could be released, the daughter will get a $10,000 CD from him like he told me when it sells, he was going to give her a $10,000 CD, and and we could move on. And that would be a good resolution for, he's an elderly man, and, he, uh, and, and if we were to profit any, as the contract said we were allowed to, we would just pay the $7,000 judgment on the property line dispute, because my wife doesn't want a $7,000 judgment against us. And we're liable for that, for our interest in the property. And that's somewhat what the sorry, decisis uh, president law says, is that when a contract like that is made, we had liabilities that we entered that, that were valuable. That's a $7,000 value that the, the, the property line was surveyed. We did that acting as the agents. The daughter didn't do that. The daughter didn't make any arrangements for survey. She didn't come to any court appearances in Taney County as the agent for Ronald Raymond, too. So uh, I'm only asking that you would be reasonable. I have little children, and, if, and I think there's a solution that even if we didn't make any money, if we get stuck with the $7,000, that's really not fair. But uh, I, I, I want to see a settle... Uh, uh, an end to to this, and I think you would too. Well, sir, I thought we had it settled. But then you told the judge that you were bullied into accepting the deal. I was. That's how I felt. I was, and I'll let the judge know that whenever I appear in for. I'll apologize to, for her to her for the misunderstanding, but. Well, you'll, you'll apologize to her for lying because you were asked no. specifically was anyone forcing you to do this, and you said no. I was not lying. I was not lying. So the, 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 the totality of circumstances. So you're telling me that you did not know at the time you said that you were not bullied, that you had been bullied. The last so time we... aware of the fact that you felt bullied later. The last time I went to court, when this moved forward, Mr. Steely was standing in front of the door. Deputies forced me to walk by him, violating a six-foot uh, social distancing even. I asked for him to step back. I am afraid of the man. I don't want anything to do with the man. And I... And, and, and I'm heckled, called a coward and a psycho as I go into court. And, and this was... Sir, I, can't help, I can't help the reputation that other people have of you. 
the reputation of other people. But but there's a behavior at the county courthouse. Do you mind if I go back and I publish all of our conversations? I mean, that's only going to anger you more to want to get me. 